Hey guys, Addison Smith here uh, with Everything Church Pro, and so many people struggle to you know study their Bible, and so with the videos and the podcasts from Everything Church Pro, it's our goal to help you just study it, make it more enjoyable than ever before. And if that's interesting to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button and join the Everything Church Pro family. Now today we're going to be talking about how to draw closer to God or how to get closer to God. And as we are in this time of quarantine and we are kind of separated from our church family, it can be easy to let our hearts kind of cool off. It can be easy to, you know, turn on the live stream, but be so distracted with everything else that it's not the same. And what can begin to happen is over these weeks is we can begin to cool down and we can begin to feel distant from God. And friends, I know that feeling. In fact, I've been praying even recently like, man, God, I want to stay close to you. I don't want to ever, you know, draw away from you. And so, God, I need your help. And as I was studying this last Sunday, I even talked about this a little bit on our podcast. I just went kind of a little bit into it. And if you haven't joined our podcast, you can search that Everything Church Pro. And every morning we give out a daily dose of God's word. But I was looking in Revelation chapter number 3, and I'd invite you to turn there yourself, and it says this. We're going to read some. And we're just going to jump through this, and I, I promise you, if you follow to the end, you're going to see this passage in such a more potent light, and you're going to know exactly what you need to do in order to be close to God again, in order to know that near presence again. And so verse number 14 of chapter 3 says this, And unto the angel... Of the church of the Laodiceans write. Now, angel, he wasn't talking about an actual, you know, what we would think of angel. He's talking about the messenger there, the pastor there at Laodicea. And he says this, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of of God. Now friends, every time words are placed in the Bible, they're there for an, for a reason. And if you look at these different letters that he's writing to these different churches, he uses different titles and he uses the titles that he knows they need to hear at that moment. If you look here at this word, he says he doesn't say this thing says Jesus. He says these things say the amen. There's a reason Jesus calls himself the amen. This word as I was studying it and I studied it with some of my teens back in the day, oh, it was so rich. This word amen, right? If you were to look at it in Greek, do you know what the word is? It's amen, right? Amen. It's the same word. It was transliterated from Greek into English. But here's the thing, it was transliterated from Greek, it was translated into Greek from Hebrew. The word Amen comes from the Hebrew language right there. Amen. And it means let it be. It's that self-existence, right? And he says, these things say the one who lets it be. And what does that bring to your mind when you think of that? Genesis 1, 1, you know, Genesis 1, the whole thing. When he says, let there be light in verse 3, I believe it is. Let there be this. Let it be. Let it be. He says, these things say the amen. If you were to look at what Jesus says, oftentimes says, verily, verily. If you were to look at that in Greek or even Hebrew, do you know what he'd be saying? Amen. Amen. Let it be. He's saying, Amen, Amen. And this is what he says here. These things say the Amen. The one who is literally the one who lets it be, who lets everything exist, the one who is literally holding up the entire universe and keeping it together. This is the person who's talking to you. And he says, The faithful and true witness, faithful, never changing, the true, that which is, witness, the beginning of the creation of God. He's trying to show you everything that you see, everything that there is is that's mine and i am the one who made it and i'm the one who keeps it there right and he says this i know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot i would thou wert cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spew thee out of my mouth this is where it began to really convict me. He says, I wish you were cold, I wish you were hot, but you're neither. You're lukewarm. And we can spend all day talking about what is the what does he mean by cold? What does he mean by hot? And we can talk about, you know, the different springs and all those, but that's not the point of this passage. He says, I wish you were cold, I wish you were hot, but you're not. The problem is you're lukewarm. And so the question we should be asking ourselves is what is lukewarm and am I that? Right? And he looks and he says, because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I'm going to vomit you. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. 
You see, the punishment for lukewarm is this distance. It's this separation from God. That's the problem that lukewarmness creates. And you say, so what is this lukewarm? I don't like that distance. That's, I mean, that's why we're here watching this video. Because I, I want to draw closer to God. I want to feel near to God. Yet he says if you're lukewarm, he's going to literally shove you away from himself. That's always been the punishment, right? In the Garden of Eden, when they sinned, what did he do? He exiled them out of the garden. When the children of Israel messed up, what did he do? He exiled them from their land. When we are, are sinning, we have this distance that we feel from God. And he says, if you are lukewarm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna push you away from myself. But then what does he say? He says, the reason why, this is what lukewarmness is right here. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of, underline this, nothing. And he says, you think you have everything you need. You think that apart from me, you've got everything. You think, I mean, I got riches, I've got goods, I'm, I'm at peace, I got my family, I'm okay without God, right? He says, you think that you're okay without me. You've come to such a place in your life that you think everything's okay, and you don't need me like you used to need me anymore. But he says this, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Friend, can I ask you, did do you think that you're okay without God? And you're probably saying, no, I don't. Well, can I ask you an even tougher question? Did you get up this morning and study God's word? Have you been searching after him and, and craving him? Have you been really meditating on his word? Because friend, if not, you might be lukewarm. I might be lukewarm if I'm somebody who thinks I can get along in my day without spending my time with God. If I think that I'm okay without Him, He says, you think you're okay because you've got what you need, because you've, you've got the food on the table. You think you're okay because you've got, you know, the money in the bank. And you think you're okay because you've got the house and you've got the car. You think you're okay and you can keep going, but you don't know that you're wretched. You're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, you're naked. And friend, those aren't my descriptors of you. I, I would never say such a thing about you. This is what Jesus says. When you think you are, you are taken care of apart from him and you don't really need him anymore. Yeah, he's nice. Yeah, you'll watch church sometimes. Yeah, you'll read your Bible sometimes. But he's not a necessity. Like he said in the first verse, he's the amen. Then he says, you're lukewarm. And he says this in verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me. Gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Do you see what he just did there? He said, hey, you think you're rich, you think that because you have all these material goods, and you think because you don't have to worry about where the next meal's coming from, and you think because you've got status, you think because of all these other things that you are doing okay, but he says this, no. Those things aren't, don't make you rich. If you have $15 million in the bank, you're not rich. You are wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind and naked. If you don't have me. And he says, so I counsel you, come to me and buy of me gold tried in the fire. He says, your gold has to come from me in order for it to mean something. He says, come and get my clothing. Come, come to me and get eye salve, right? So you can actually see, you think that because you've got everything, here you're okay but friend this is what we need to realize if we want to get close to god we need to realize that without him we have nothing nothing matters without him no job matters without him no family matters without him no possession matters without him and this is what he's trying to show us in this passage if you think that you are doing okay without him you're lukewarm if you think you're doing okay without like without every everything needs to be filtered through his hands he says you're lukewarm warm and so what is what's the the remedy to this he says this is the remedy he says as many as i love i rebuke and chase and be zealous therefore and repent he says turn from that he says you need to make a 180 stop thinking that way and what does he mean he means don't keep going the way you're going turn around and this is how he finishes this off ready so when we are thinking that we're okay and we don't really need to do our devotions we don't really need to pay attention in church we think that we're okay he says no 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 turn from that attitude turn from thinking you're okay and come straight to me and look at what he says behold i stand at the door and knock <clears throat> jesus is seeking after you you know you're watching excuse me <clears throat> you're watching this video wanting to be closer to him and this is what jesus is saying 
I'm knocking at your heart right now. You're not the only one who wants to be close. I am literally knocking right there, right? I'm knocking. And he says, if any man hear my voice and open the door, right? He says, if you open the door, what does he say? I might come in? No. He says, I will. He says, I will come in to him and will sup with him. That's that picture of fellowship. This is the opposite of being pushed away. That's that nearness that you're craving. That's that revival that you're craving. He says, if you'll just turn from thinking everything's okay and just because you have everything you need, if you just turn from that and come right back to me and realize that I have everything you need and that I am the amen and I am the faithful and true witness and I am the beginning of the creation. If you just come back to me and realize that you need me, he says this, I'll come in and we'll have that sweet inner fellowship together. And he goes on to say that to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also came and sat down with my father in his throne. And this is how he ends. He that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Friend, I, I, if you got mad at this or you really don't think it's you and you really think, oh, I, I think my problem's something else, okay. But this is what he says at the end. Only those who have ears to hear will be able to hear. He says, let those that have ears to hear, hear. Right? Is that you? Friend, I'm not trying to push your buttons. I am a human just like you. And I have to read through this and think, man, Have I come to the point where I think that I've got everything that I need apart from a a vibrant relationship with God? That's a tough question. But the answer, the remedy is so simple. Turn from that and realize how much you need Jesus and open the door to him and fellowship with him. And then you'll know that nearness, right? That inner nearness. Stop thinking that you're okay not doing your devotions in the morning. Stop thinking that it's okay to kind of, you know, turn on church but not get engaged and not allow him to search you and try you. And see what God will do in your heart and in your life. And that fellowship and that closeness and that nearness will return. I hope this was a blessing too. If it was, feel free to leave a thumbs up or share this with a friend. I pray that through this quarantine we don't come out cold. We come out on fire for God and we come out ready to see this world changed by the good news. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you later.